Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we shall shortly be joining today's webinar. We'll just wait another minute just to make sure we've got all, all the attendees on the call. So it's 12 o'clock here in the UK and one o'clock on the continent. So I think we'll make a start now. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And I'd like to thank you for joining our webinar this afternoon. Um, I normally have my camera on, but unfortunately I've got some technical problems with it today. So I'm on audio only. Um, but before moving on to our speakers, I'd like to introduce myself. And I'm Keith Farmer, Commercial Communications Specialist at the Fish Scientific Channel. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2019, we put together a programme of webinars to share with our customers and we are continuing to offer exciting and informative webinars to help keep you informed and engaged. You can view our upcoming webinars and revisit the previous ones by going to our webinar webpage, which you can access using the link in the programme section of our home page and also under events and exhibitions which you can find at the bottom of our main web landing page. Please be aware that we are recording this webinar so it can be made available on our website. Now I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Michelle Newton, another commercial communication specialist at the Fish Scientific Channel. Michelle is here with me today and will tell you how our question and answer session will work. So over to you, Michelle. Thank you, Keith. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon even. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, so, um, as Keith explained, I will be your chat master for today's webinar. Um, so, you've entered the webinar on mute, but you are able to unmute yourself at the end of the presentation to ask Marcus any questions that, that you may have. You can also ask questions as we go through the presentation using the, the chat function, um, and we'll also cover all of those questions at the end. So, to ask your questions, please click on the red arrow, which allows you to hide or expand your control panel, and you can ask your questions through there. Um, so I will hand you back to Keith, um, and we'll cover the questions later. So Keith, over to you. Thanks, Michelle. So today we are joined by a supply colleague, Marcus Garcia Fernandez from Berkel. Marcus studied business administration with a specialization in transport and logistics in Germany. After his studies, he worked for a logistics company in Spain before moving to England to improve his English. Here he worked in sales for a wine company. After that, he started at Berkel GmbH, where he has now been for 11 years working as head of export, selling sampling equipment, manual pumps and labware. So now I'll hand over to Marcus, who will run through today's presentation. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Michelle. So welcome, welcome to Bürkler here in Germany. So we are in the southwest of Germany, next to the border to Switzerland and France, very close here behind our office and our production. And today I would like to thank you, uh, to uh, give a big thanks to Fischer to give this opportunity to show you and to guide you a little bit through the new chances that you have with single use and disposable sampling, which is getting more and more important right now here in, in the farm industry, especially. So if it's time for you, I would start now with my presentation and we'll be happy to answer all your questions afterwards. So let me share my presentation with you. So hopefully all of you now can see the first page of my presentation. So we are going to talk today about disposable single use sampling and why it's getting more and more important right now out there. Mainly I would like to start just to give a very short introduction about Bürkler so that you know 
um, what we do mainly. So we develop, manufacture, and sell our um, manual samplers all over the world. We are specialized in manual pumps for different liquids. There, especially all kind of uh, aggressive uh, liquids for inflammable liquids, anything that you have to manage, we have a solution for it, also solvents, for example. And then we have a wide range of plastic lab equipment and containers. So these are our three main parts uh, where we mainly focused in. And all over the world, I think the product range, which is Bürgle mostly known for our sampling equipment. So for many, many years, we are already producing um, sampling equipment mainly made of stainless steel and PDFE, Teflon. And in the last year, since 2040, we started to produce also single-use products. So today we are going to see why this change is happening in the market out there and also which are the advantages for switching from reusable samplers to the single-use samplers. But first of all, just to understand maybe a little bit more um, the high importance of single-use sampling is, I think, very important just to talk very shortly about what is behind sampling, why is sampling so important, and what is important when you take samples. So I think the first and most important thing is that the correct procedure for taking Samples is a very important subject because only if you have a representative and authentic sample which can give you reliable information about the quality, properties, or composition of a particular material um, is a correct sample. So it's very, very important to take the sample the correct way because if you don't do that, it doesn't make sense to spend thousands of euros in analyzing um, material, for example, and equipment that you can find in the labs where you spend a lot of money um, just analyzing samples. But if you analyze a sample, which is already taken wrongly, you will have uh, the problem that the results of the analyze maybe will not be correct. So very important when you take samples is to Include any errors and contamination. This is very important because if you have an error in the sample or any contamination, you will find this then in your final result, and this will guide you maybe to wrong um, results. So there, you can see here a picture as a chain. So only if you get correct and representative, uh, reliable results, if you take correct samples. So imagine if not and you conclude that the material, for example, has no good quality, and you elim eliminate a whole production even when the material is originally perfect and the fault is occurred by taking um, the sample. This is very important, but you can, for example, imagine how it is, especially, for example, in the pharmaceutical industry, where all the materials are very expensive. So if you have then to eliminate a complete production just because you talk, uh, you take have taken a wrong sample, this will be really um, be a very bad thing. So very important, taking samples need to be re reproducible. So you have to ensure that they are com comparable. So if you take a sample, it has to be always exactly the same if you take afterwards a second sample, because you can only um, compare samples if you took them the same way. Then, I think very important also about the samplers. What are the challenges for the samplers? Not only when you take the sample, there's a big challenge on the samplers. And this is also one of the reasons that you will see later um, got the market, especially the pharma industry, changing more and more from reusable to uh, single-use sampling equipment. Very important for the sampler is that it's made of inert materials. It's easy and quick to clean. It must not have any grooves or crevices. And this surface has to be especially smooth. 
So this is, of course, mainly talking about general sampling equipment. So for especially the reusable that you have to clean afterwards and everything. Today, we will concentrate even more uh, on the single use versions. And there, I think it's very important that we are talking about the difference of using a single use and using a reusable sampler. So the samplers that you should be uh, use should always be made of inert substances from which no material can come and lose into the sample. So clean and pure samplers are very important. We are talking about, again, reusable samplers. They have always to be clean and pure. In, in some industry and for some materials, it is even more important than in others. For example, pharmaceutical industry versus the uh, plastic industry. So especially the farm industry has very high standards that as we will see later, where they don't give you any yeah, big chances to choose what to do. So they force you more and more to use single use samplers. And we will see in a few minutes why. If you use reusable samplers, of course, it's very important that they be very easy and quick to clean. And sometimes even you have to sterilize them afterwards. As I said previously, the most important thing when you take samples is to take correct samples and that the results of the analysis are correct. So cross-contamination has to be excluded totally. Why are we having more and more a growing importance of sampling and taking samples? Not only reusable, uh, not only single use, also on reusable samplers, there's getting more and more importance of this. So very important is, as I said previously, correct sampling and high quality equipment ensure reliable, improved analytic results. As I said previously, as you saw on the chain that we have there, if you are making a mistake when taking the sampling, this mistake and this error will go through all other steps afterwards. So all the results that you will get from this analyzing this sample will be with an error also. Nowadays, especially we are always taking, talking about especially the farm industry, but also the food industry, there's a rising importance of quality assurance. Of course, the harmonization and standardization of quality systems is getting more and more important. As you will know, for sure, for example, a pharma industry who is producing in Switzerland and is producing at the same time in India or in Spain or in France, they will have to ensure that wherever they are producing one and the same product, they will have the same results and the products have the same quality. So therefore, the harmonization, standardization of quality systems is getting more and more important, especially with these global players that we have on the market. Then the validation of results is getting more and more important. There's always more um, highlighting this point in, in audits, for example. Of course, GMP compliant processes, high audit requirements, as I said previously, the audit requirements, especially in the farm industry, are getting higher and higher every year. And then, as I said previously, detailed, reproductible and controlled processes. So this is only possible if you take the sample always the same way and you always get the same results when taking the samples. And very important in the farm industry also, documentation of proper sampling and quality assurance. So it's not only uh, that you take the sample the correct way, it's also very important the documentation, how you take the sample, how you clean the sample afterwards, and how you guarantee that you're using a clean sampler, for example. And very important also for the growing importance of sampling is that sampling is getting more and more regular to ensure quality in the different companies. So how do we choose the right sampler? Just before we see the difference between single use and reusable samplers. For us at Bukle and what we always try to hand over to our suppliers 
and very important suppliers like Fisher Scientificus to ask your customer, uh, you as a customer and end user maybe always some main questions to find the right sampler. And there are not many questions to answer just to find the uh, right sampler and I would like to show you how to decide to find the right sampler. So the information that we, we as supplier would need or Fisher Scientific, uh, the sales rep of Fisher would need is which medium needs to be sampled. So it's important what kind of medium are we going to take a sample from. Then of course, out of which kind of container will the sample be taken. It's not the same, take a sample, for example, from a, uh, let us say, 200 liter barrel or taking a sample from, I don't know, from the open sea, for example, or from a lake, for example. So depending from where you take a sample, it's also important. Very important when we're talking about the medium that we are sampling is which consistency does the medium have? Is it fluent? Is it hard? Is it agglomerative or it's pourable? liquid, not liquid, powder. So depending on what it's the consistency and what is the medium, we would have different options. Then also important, uh, which volume of the sample is needed. Normally in the farm industry, uh, the samples are very small because of the high cost of, of the material in the farm industry, of course, they are only taking small samples. Then another point is which kind of sampling technique are you going to need? So we have two or three different ways to take samples. We have the point sampling. So you decide one specific point in the container where you want to take the sample from. Then we have the cross-sectional sampling, which will take a sample from all different layers in this container. And you have then one sample representing all the layers. Or you can also choose from a sampler, which is a multi-point sampling. There you can take in one step, for example, with a sampler with three openings, you can take then three samples from three different uh, layers in the container and analyze then the di three different layers. This is important, for example, um, if you imagine, for example, if you get a silo truck, coming to the production, for example, and you want to take a sample from this uh, truck directly um, from when the truck is driving through, um, through the country, the normal thing is that the uh, smaller parts will get down to the bottom of the truck, to the silo, and the bigger parts, which are in this container, will stay at the top. So if you need them to analyze the different layers to see how it looks like the bottom, how it looks like in the middle, for example, and then how it looks like at the top. You can use a multi-point sampling equipment and you take just one sample, one step, in one step, three different samples, for example, and you analyze then the three different layers. And last but not least, bottom sampling, of course, is the same like point sampling, but there, especially you are sampling the bottom of the container. And then the last point, which is getting more and more important and is also one of the reasons that we're having this webinar today is what kind of sampler are you looking for? Do you need a disposable single-use sampler or is it better to use a multi-usable sampler? So we at Bürgler, we have both options. As I said previously, we started with the multi-usable samplers and of course we still have the samplers in our product range. And what we have now, uh, since um, eight years now at Bürkle, when we started to produce the single-use sampling equipment by ourselves here in Germany, in our clean room, we have now for you as a customer the option to decide if you need or you want a reusable sampler or if you prefer the single-use sampler that we are going to present you today. We are going to talk in a few minutes also about the advantages of using the single-use samplers but the main points for the decision to take one or the other will be always if the material needs to be sampled, if it is very greasy, for example, heavily sticky or toxic, then 
maybe it's more interesting for you to use a reusable sampler because the cleaning process could be maybe too difficult for you. Then, as I said already, is it possible to clean the sampling tool easily without any risk for the user? So, is it easy to clean and you just take one sample a month, for example, please go for a reusable sampler. We have high quality stainless steel um, samplers that you can use and you can clean it afterward. You can even sterilize it, auto club, whatever you need, and it's totally fine. But if you're dealing with heavily sticky or toxic or cre very greasy um, materials, of course, you will get maybe on the point where it's very difficult to clean it. And then maybe it would be easier for you to use a single use sampler and you can then spend your time and your money in using single use sampling equipment and not in cleaning the samplers afterwards. So with this, Six questions. If you are in need of any sampling equipment and the answer to these questions, I'm sure the sales rep of um, Fisher will be able to guide you to the right sampling equipment. And if not, they will immediately contact us and we normally always respond on the same day and give them our recommendations, which would be the right sampler for you. So please feel free to contact them if you need any help to find the right sampler. Here on this slide, we can see the advantages or what are the main points of disposable single-use samplers and on the other side, the reusable samplers. Let me start with the reusable samplers. Of course, they are multiple usable, so you use them all the time, again and again. They are mainly made of stainless steel, aluminum, PDFE or similar inert material and are always made of high quality materials. This is very important, especially for the farm industry. They will not accept anything which is not high quality materials. Then it's always very important when you take sample that they are precise. No creases, uh, crevices or undercuts and high quality construction. Of course, what you don't want if you take a sample is that something from the sampler gets into the sample. Therefore, it's very important that it's always high quality construction. And then, very important when it is multi, multiple usable, it has to be simplified cleaning. So when you have a reusable sampler, very important is that always after using the sampling equipment, you have to clean it very good so that you have no cross contamination when you take a second sample, for example. On the other side, we have the um, main points of single use samplers. Of course, as the name already says, it's just for single use for one time. They are made of plastic, mainly of uh, PE or PS, produced and assembled in a, our clean room here in our production in Germany. They are all individually packaged. In farm industry, here where you see it's optionally also sterilized by gamma rays. Of course, in farm industry, it's normally always the gamma uh, sterilized version that the customer use. And you need no cleaning process with the single use samplers. Big advantage already. Um, with the single use that you can see is the validation is not necessary for disposable. So you don't need any validation of the cleaning process and anything. You have all the certificates directly on our website or you can also find all our certificates on the Fisher website. We are already a short trace partner of Fisher Scientific. So you can with the lot number of our single use product, you can find all the certificates on the website at Fisher Scientific also. What are the main properties of the disposal samplers? As I said previously, the reusable, we already said, high quality stainless steel, aluminum, PDFE. So these are the reusable, the single use ones. Here, just for your indication, if you don't know it already, at Bürgle we have the difference between Laboplast and Steriplast items. These are our two brand names at Bürgle for plastic equipment. So 
The single use samplers, they are all individually packaged. Production, assembly, and packing is all in, in our class seven clean rooms that we have here. And they are all with EU foodstuff and FDA approval. So this is all for the Laboplast range. And then, especially in the farm industry, we have also the sterilized version, which is exactly the same as we see uh, at the Laboplast version. The only difference is that it's furthermore sterilized by, by gamma rays. So everything the same with the additional advantage of sterilization. So here, these are the main properties of the disposable samplers. What are the advantages of single-use samplers for you as a user? As we know from our customers, is that in many uh, pharma sectors, there's no other solution permitted any longer. So the quality departments in this um, pharma sectors, they indicated to use single-use products. So there, uh, you will know any more have the chance to choose between reusable and single use. Then a very, very important point is working and cleaning processes do not need to be validated in audits. I'm sure uh, if you have audits in your company, you will be very happy to have them as smooth and easy as possible. And I can assure you one of the most difficult thing when you take samples and you have an audit is to get this cleaning process validated. We know from companies in the farm industry where they have to, been doing this all the time, cleaning the assembling equipment, putting them in the autoclave, sterilizing afterwards, and packing again in a single pack uh, after the uh, for the sterilization. And still then, the, with, the, uh, with the validation process, they don't get it through the uh, audits. So therefore, Absolutely no problem. All certificates about sterility, clean room. So we have a certifi certificate of conformity, which you can find at our website always, or as I said previously, you can visit the Fisher website where you will find at the SureTrace program at each product that you are buying on the website, you will find also a space where you can put in the lot number from our products and with this lot number, it will guide you directly to our to this certificate. Very important advantage also are no work processes do not have to be interrupted by cleaning. Of course, if you take a sample, taking the sample will take you five to 10 seconds maybe. Cleaning a sampler can easily take 10 to 15 minutes. So if a person who takes the sample has to stop his work of taking samples every time to clean the sample afterwards. This will interrupt all the time his work process. So with single use sampler, no need of um, interrupting the work process. As I said previously, no need to clean after the use, the sampler, of course, big advantage, no time lose. And cross-contamination is completely el eliminated. You're receiving a single packed sampler which is sterilized with all the certification and you don't need to be um, aware about cleaning processes or uh, having a look into any possibilities of cross-contamination. As I said previously, also safety can be a reason to use the single-use samplers, especially if you are dealing with toxic, toxic and dangerous substances. As you can imagine, the Things that you have to think about when you're cleaning a sampler with toxic or dangerous substances is very dangerous for the end user. So therefore, if you use single use sampler, it's much, much easier. You don't have to clean it afterwards. Time and money can be saved. Of course, you're spending more money on buying single use sampling equipment. I mean, we will see in a minute, uh, just um, what this means for you as an end user, but you, when you save time, of course, you also save money. So, and this time, um, this is the reason that we put this point here as an advantage of single use sampler. And all these points bring you to the point that sampling with the highest degree of purity is only possible with single use sampler. So, 
the advantage of the single sampler, I would like to show you an example. As I said previously, you save time and you save money. And I would like to show you how you can save money, even that you're spending now more money in buying material to take samples instead of having maybe one stainless steel sampler where you take uh, the samples with. So let me just take as an example, for example, a farmer company taking sample from a viscous medium and they take, let us say, 10 samples per day. This is just not really very much high number what's happening out there, but just let us take as an example, 10 samples per day. If you see here in the reusable um, version, for example, you would be spending, let us say, approximately 500 euros in buying a reusable stainless steel high quality sampler from Buechler. And then every day, a cleaning process can take 15 minutes to half an hour, but let us say just 15 minutes in cleaning the sampling equipment and you do this 10 times a day, you would be spending approximately 75 euros a day in cleaning the sampling equipment. If we multiply this, let us say by 220 days a year, we, you, you would be spending approximately around about 17,000 euros in taking samples. On the other side, using single-use samplers from Bürkler, um, taking 10 samples a day. A sampler, let us say, costs of approximately six euro for every sampling equipment, for example, for the viscous sampler, for example. This would be 60 euros a day that you're spending. And for cleaning, you would be not spending any money in this example. At the end, if you multiply then the 60 euros a day with the 220 days that you're taking samples, you would be spending 30,000 euros in sampling equipment and in taking samples. This is just to give an idea about how much the costs are and the difference are, because sometimes at the first step, especially in, and when we are do talking with the um, purchasing guide, of course, they say, okay, here I'm spending only 500 euros for the reusable. There I'm going to be spending all the time money for taking uh, samples. Of course, you will be spending much, much more money into sampling equipment with single use, but on the other side, you are not any longer spending money into um, cleaning the sampling equipment. So therefore, let us just see who are the main users of our samplers. And of course, the main market is the pharmaceutical industry. Also, the food industry and in general, all kinds of industries are um, using our samplers also for taking water samples in the sea or from lakes or from rivers, for example. But mainly, of course, especially when we're talking about single-use samplers, the pharmaceutical industry is our main market. The main reasons, as I already highlighted previously, I would like to repeat, is the highest requirements that they have. So purity, sterility, and GMP, very important three points in the pharma industry. Then cost and time intensive cleaning. So of course, if you are some material which is difficult to clean and especially in the pharma industry, where you have to be 100% sure not having any cross-contamination and the sampling equipment is clean. The cost and time is very intensive there. Farm industry is a very frequent sampler of material. Then the farmer has a high auditing requirements, very high auditing requirements, which we know from farm industry visiting and making also audits here with Fisher at Bürkler. Um, then dangerous, aggressive, toxic substances also, which are often used in the farm industry. There, the easiest way would be to use single-use samplers. So the higher the requirements are, 
like in the farm industry, the more they can just be fulfilled with single-use samplers. Now I would like to give you a very short overview just that you can see a wide range of sampling equipment that is out there uh, in the market. So we are talking about smaller disposal samplers like scoops, spatulas, spoons, scrapers, forceps, for example. So all smaller kind of samplers that you use maybe in the clean room at the production or in the labs. So we have the scoops from 25 milliliters up to 2000 mill milliliters and also some spatulas and spoons. And these are all made of polystyrene. For example, our scoops that you can see there, we have them also with a transparent cover so that you can, and also the spatula that you can see here or the top right, it has a, if you want, it comes also with this um, transparent cover. So you can, for example, take a sample and after taking the sample, just close the sample equipment with this transparent cover and you can transport then the sample to the lab, for example, and you can exclude any contamination. The scoops is maybe also interesting to you know that nothing can trickle out thanks to the special design, stays very um, stable. And with the spatula, of course, as with the other bigger samples that we are, you can, um, it's possible for you to penetrate directly into containers such as paper or plastic sacks, for example. So you don't have to open um, a big bag, for example, you just penetrate directly into the container, take the sample, and then you can close this big bag again with our labels that we have at Bürkle, and you're safe that nothing contaminates the material. Here you can see some other smaller samplers like spatulas and spoon spatulas, dosing spoons that we have and forceps. So here you have all kinds of um, different sizes also, for example, for the dosing ones from 0 0.5 milliliters up to 50 milliliters and different yeah, shapes of forceps, tweezers like the pointed angled one or the broad tip shape that we have, for example. We have also a spoon spatula that you can see, and also a pallet knife that you see at the top right, for example. Then since last year, if you have to take a sample from like uh, something which is where you have to go maybe deeper into a container, for example, we have that now this long handle product range where you can find the spoons, the uh, ladle, the uh, curved spoon that we have, or the big scoops, all of them, you can see on the right top on this picture, they're normally on a total length of 360 to 375 millimeters, so it's easier to get into containers and take a sample, for example. Here we are at the disposable samplers, and these are the bigger ones. So this is more what I was talking at the beginning, a big, stainless steel sampling equipment that we have for many, many years for taking samples, no matter if it's granulate, powders, liquids. Here we have now, for all the samples that we have, we have now also a single-use sterilized version for you. So you can see, for example, the micro um, dispo. The micro dispo is just uh, very mu uh, much at the top, or you can see the second picture on the right, uh, in the middle, is just the tip of the micro. So this is a sampler where you can take um, a very, very small quantities. It's a point sampling sampler, and you just take the sample of this small opening that you can see there on the picture. This is very especially interesting, I think, for the farm industry. As I said previously, often they just have to take very small quantities and the other samplers, as you will see here, take, take normally bigger quantities. Then we have the powder dispo. It's a slightly sharp lens to handle the power at the powder. So it's quite easy to take a sample. You just, as you can see in the middle picture where a person is penetrating already in this um, sack, 
you just stick into it and you just take a sample out of it. Same with the dispo picker. There you can take a cross-section sampling, for example. It a, has a closed tip so that you can take the sample and without any danger of falling out the sample afterwards, you can just let it inside the sampler and bring it to the lab to analyze it afterwards. Or you can also use a dispo lens, which is the image at the bottom. There you have, um, of course, it's for free-flowing powders and it's for an easy and quick sample collection. So the good thing is you can decide if you take a large as well as a small quantity as a sample because said, uh, it has an open end so that when you take the sample, you can put uh, back directly at the end of the sampler and you just take the quantity that you need to take a sample of and when you're finished, you just take out the sampler again and close the big bag with our label and you have taken the sample without any thing falling on the floor. Then we have for powders and granulates, um, different kinds of sampler, we have the target dispo. So the target dispo is mainly for, um, yeah, just for point sampling. It's the one at the top in the big picture. It has only one opening at the bottom, as you can see. So with this one, you can do the point sampling. You just choose the point where you want to take the sample. You go there, you stick the, you penetrate into the container until you reach the point where you want to take the sample. You open the sampler, take the sample, close it again, take the sampler out of the container and you have the sample in there. Then you have the zone dispo and the multi dispo. It's pretty much the same sampling equipment. So you have three openings in the sampler. The inner tube is open, so you're taking an all layer sample. Here, depending on which one you take, you will always have then one sample representing all different layers. The advantage of the multi dispo compared with the zone dispo, the only difference is that the multi dispo has an open, um, yeah, just an open ho uh, hole at the back, at the end of the handle of the sampler, so that you can easily empty it. Um, by just pouring everything out of the end of the sample, as you can see in the first picture at the bottom. Also for liquids and viscous substances, we have all kinds of sampling equipment. We have the liquid dispo, as the name already tells you. It's for um, liquid medias. It works like a syringe. So with an economic handle, you can easily just pull out the sample from wherever you have to take a sample from. Then you have the dispo tube. It has a handle which makes it easier to handle the sampler. And then you have the dispo pipette, which is just a plastic tube with two openings at each end and quite easy to take, like with a pipette and a sample from the liquid. Then you also have a dispo ladle which is the first picture at the bottom, uh, the left. There you can take easily sample from containers, for example, from open containers. And the good thing is you have a spout on both sides, so it's quite easy. Doesn't matter if you work with the land, left or the right hand, you can very easily um, empty it with the spout, which is on each side of the sampling equipment. And then we have the visco dispo, which is exactly the same like the liquid sampler, but with a bigger opening at the end. So it makes it easier to take samples also from very viscous substances up to 100 millipass, for example. So I think this guarantees you a quite easy way to take samples from, from any viscous medias. Then last but not least, I would also like to present you our Dispo Dipper, I think, which is a quite interesting sampling equipment because as you can see it here on the picture at the top, it's also like all other single-use sampling equipment, of course, single uh, packaged and also sterilized, the sterilized version. And it comes produced all in one piece, as you can see it here in the picture at the top. So the complete sampler is produced 
in one piece. So when you take a sample, you just take it out of the package. You just break off the cap, take the sample with the sampling equipment, and then you put the cap on the sampling tube. You close it and you break off the sampling tube from the sampling from the sampler. So here you're spending money on two products. One is the sampling equipment, and at the same time you're already having a sterilized um, container where you can transport after taking the sample the sample to the lab, for example. As we are talking about single-use sampling equipment, I think it's um, also important to know that we also have a bio green PE version. So this is also important for us because most of you maybe from private life, we are going exactly the other direction, what means to single-use and plastic products out there. So we are switching from single-use to reusable uh, products in private, but in the pharma industry, we are going exactly the other way. Therefore, Bugle also wanted to have at least a greener um, option for the end user, and these ones are produced by BioP. This means the product is made of renewable raw materials like sugarcane, for example. And with this, you can guarantee that the CO2 emission at the production will be lower, and at least there we can give something back to the nature if you have to use single-use products, for example. Last slide of my presentation would be the disposable sampling bags. So when you take a sample, of course, you have to put it somewhere to uh, in some kind of container to bring it afterwards after taking the sample into the lab to analyze it. So we have, for example, also the sampling bag, sterile bag, clean room, which is ideally suited for introducing into the clean room and it's with double packaging so there you can take it out inside of the clean room open it and you can guarantee that it's complete sterilized even using it in the clean room last an overview just before i end with my presentation would like to give you on your hand and for the future and to remember the biggest the most important advantages of single-use sampling and why using single-use sampling. So trying here to highlight a little bit the different points that I tried to explain you through the webinar today. The main points are in many pharma sectors, there's no other solution permitted, as I said previously. So they force you to use single-use equipment because of the validation process. So working and cleaning process do not need to be validated in audits very important point work processes do not have to be interrupted by cleaning as i said previously the worker can just concentrate in taking samples and don't have to be thinking about cleaning the sampler afterwards so no need of cleaning sampling equipment afterwards cross-contamination is completely eliminated when using single-use samplers safety also very important point nowadays in production safety for our um, end users, for our um, workers. When the substances are toxic or dangerous, no need to clean it afterwards. So safe use of sampling equipment for the end user. And as I showed you, time and money are saved when using sampling equipment because you don't have to spend time and money in cleaning the sampling equipment. So this would be the end of my presentation. I would hand over to Michelle now and for the question round. Hi, Marcus. Uh, OK, so thank you very much for that really interesting presentation. Um, we have got some questions for you, um, but does anybody on the call want to ask a question before I go to the posted questions? Okay, I'll let you have a little think. I will give you another opportunity. 
Great. So the first question we've got is why should I use disposable samplers? Of course. So one of the main things is, I think I repeated a lot of times, but I would like to highlight it again, is in the farm industry, you are forced often to use them. But of course, there are three important things I think to remember. It's if you take just one sample a week, a month, it's totally fine to use a reusable sampler because then you can spend the time and money in cleaning this uh, equipment. But if you are in the farm industry where you easily can take 10, 20, 100 samples a day, um, it will take you more time and money when spending on cleaning processes than instead of using reusable uh, single-use samplers. So therefore, I think the main thing will, of course, be um, if you need a 100% clean sample, it's always the easy step to use sterilized sampling equipment. Lovely, thank you very much. The next one we have for you is, do you provide any certificates for single use samplers? Yes, so we have full certification for all our single use samplers. So for both, we, as we said previously, we have this Labo Plus, what we call product range and the Steri Plus. Of course, the Steri Plus with the sterilization, which I think is more interesting for the farm industry and the one that the farm industry is going to use. Um, there we have um, nowadays a COC, so a Certificate of Conformity, which is also available always for five years on our website with the lot number that you can find on each single-use sampler. But at the same time, at Fisher, we are now partners in the Sure Trace program of Fisher. So there, in this um, very important part of Fisher inside of each of our product. When you go to our the product side at Fisher, you will find this field where you can just uh, put in the lot number of Bürkle, which you will find on the sampler, and then you will always be guided to the certificate of conformity where you have all the certification about sterilization, clean room, materials use, FDA, and everything that you need. Okay, that is perfect. Thank you. So you've kind of answered the next question, but I'll ask it again anyway. Um, so where do I find the lot number? So the lot <laughs> number, uh, it's a good thing. The lot number, of course, it has to be on each package of each sampler. So not making any different from the bigger samplers to the smaller scoops. There's always the lot number uh, printed on the package. So you will have always there the lot number and if it's a sterilized version you will also have there the expire expire date printed on next to the lot number so that you can see when the sterilization or what we guarantee as a maximum expiration date is uh, for this product so everything on the product okay lovely thank you um which kind of links into the next question um <laughs> what is the expiry date for the sterile items and samplers yeah, so we guarantee um, for all our single use samplers for the sterilized because the other ones, there's not really expired date. It's like every plastic product, you can keep it if you keep it on a correct way and you stock it on a correct way, not exposing to light, for example, to higher temperatures. You can yeah. keep the Labo Plus version for long term. The sterility, what we guarantee is two years from production date. So this is the minimum that we guarantee. Of course, often from our tests, it can be longer, but we guarantee always two years from the production date. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and just one last question in the chat. Um, are all items available in blue for food and beverage use? Yes, most of them. This is what you can see here, which are the bigger ones. They are not available in blue. Uh, for all the others, for example, we are now also disposable funnels, we have them also in blue, and also, for example, here version, a little bit darker ones, which are blue detectable. So there's a metallic powder in there, which can be detected by metal detectors or X-rays, for example. So we have a special blue and blue detectable product range, which can easily be used for the food and bath industry. Lovely, thank you very much. 
Um, so that's um, all of the questions that we had in the chat. Um, does anybody on the call have any questions before I hand this back over to Keith? No, I don't think we do. OK, Marcus, thank you very much for answering all those questions. Um, and I will hand you all back over to Keith. Thanks, Michelle. OK, we've come to the end of our webinar this afternoon. So I'd like to thank you once again for joining and also to thank Marcus for a very interesting and informative session, which I found enlightening. Um, before leaving you, can I just remind you to keep an eye on our webinar page to look out for webinars that may be of interest to you in future as well as the recording of today's session. So have a great afternoon and goodbye for now. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.